Hi guys, it's been a while since I've been to my garden because as you know, we've had a birth recently. So I haven't really been able to spend some time in my garden for the past four or five days. So I've had a look around and I noticed a lot of interesting developments. So let me go through them one by one. So one of the things that I noticed was that since it has been cold for the past few days, some of my aeoniums are waking up again. These guys are confused. Poor things. As you can see, the rosettes on this one are bright green. And some of them have opened up again. This is definitely sign. This is definitely a sign that they're exiting dormancy. The next thing I noticed was that if you remember this Zorro cutting, it has started to grow roots. This means that I'll be planting this in one of my pots soon. And similarly, this Paul Banyan has a lot of roots as well. In addition to the roots, the, the stump of the Paul Banyan has some pups growing, so there's one here. And, and another one right here underneath. So let me just remove this leaf. So there, I see two for now. There might be more sprouting. Oh yes, there's a tiny one here. There might be some at the other side, but it's hard to get a vantage point because the leaves are stiff. In any case, I have more Paul Bunyans. This is a tray where I dump all of my elegance. And most of them have already rooted. Some have, have even grown pups. So maybe by autumn I'll be having more plant material to work with. The earlier batches of elegance pups are now much bigger. And I imagine that by the end of summer, I would be able to use them in the landscapes already. And speaking of pups, here are my leaf propagations. They have grown quite large over the past few days. The imbricatas that are lining up my garden are all blooming. And they have grown quite a lot, so some of them are starting to crowd now. And most of them have pups. This arc is packed to the rafters. There's not much space left to add anything more. And if you look at the row of imbricata, they are starting to get big enough that they're almost touching each other. I might need to remove some of them, particularly this one. This clump of Echeveria set oliver is blooming and characteristic of the set oliver as you can see the flowers are pretty huge given that the, the rosette is small it takes the look of the flowers from its from one of its parents so in case you were wondering the set oliver's parents are Echeveria setosa and Echeveria harmsi it gets its overall look from the setosa so the size, the, the shape of the leaves, but it has red tips, getting it from its harmsy parent. The flowers are definitely harmsy in terms of size and shape. It gets the colors from setosa parent. So it has an interesting mix of both parents. My Echeveria agavoides are doing really well. And most of them have pups. I might need to pluck out the pups soon because they're pushing out really hard against the, the parent plants. This Cotyledon orbiculata, or also known as pig's ear, is crowding over the lawi. So I might need to either trim, trim the Cotyledon, or remove one of them. The flowers on this Aeonium urbicum has already dried out. But if you look closely, it's starting to grow some buds along the stem. So here's one, 
and if we go upwards there's another here so it's going to push out lots of offsets before it dry completely dries out the caranculated echeverias here like this bumps this etna and pompos they have all grown so much that it's starting to crowd here because as you know i just laid some pots here so they would also take advantage of the shade that i've set up here i might need to move them around and transfer them so that hopefully is enough space for them to stretch their leaves into this domingo has completely outgrown its pot I might have to move it out soon this cante is doing really well it has at least doubled in size since I got it and hopefully by the end of summer it would have grown large enough I can say the same for this domingo in another pot it's larger than the other one that I just showed you I might need to transfer this because it's bigger than its pot I won't be able to properly water its soil at least not just by spraying on top of it it looks like this red sails is growing again so most of its leaves are upright at the moment but come autumn at the or at the end of summer I'm pretty sure once the leaves lay flat it would be larger than this curls I think this is dry enough let me see if I can remove it nope it's still a bit firm I'll leave it there for now there's an afterglow on top of this bowl back in spring it wasn't doing really well because it was not having enough contact with the soil the way with the way I mounted it I have repaired its spot a few months ago and it looks like it it's recovering now looks like I have more of the set Oliver here and I only spotted them by chance after seeing some bright red orange flowers here this Lila China is doing really well as you can see it has grown taller the leaves are currently upright but when it gets colder after summer it will be laying flat again it has lots it has put out lots of flower stalks last spring but I don't feel like removing them yet I guess I'll just leave them there the Echeveria Glocka around it so this this little blue green ones they are all they are all clumping they have lots of pops underneath I'm just waiting for the pops to push out so I can replant them along the gaps I would be I intend to fill up the gaps with mostly gloca so it will form a stream right from the top going all the way down to this to surround this lila china so I'm looking at this mound here where I've been putting sedums if you remember the weird thing is the base of the mound is the sedums at the base of the mound are doing well but around here not so much I'm guessing this is because of the, the slope maybe it's not getting it's not retaining enough water so I might just plant some I may I might need to make a tapestry here with echeverias because their roots grow their roots go deeper than the sedums I just shown you that side interestingly on this side they're doing much better down here the jelly beans have filled up the gaps which is exactly what I was intending so I'm really happy with how this turned out the aeoniums along the fence have lots of bite marks so I should be dealing with this soon 
I'll probably be applying some insecticide, some pesticide on this spot. And now we're looking at the area of neglect. And despite the neglect, only a few of my plants died. I've got two halbingeris here that completely dried out. Well, they burnt and dried out. Although this happened back in back when I didn't have shade over here. So I was too late to save them. I guess I just have to find another halbingeri to replace what I lost. The others are doing really well here though. They've grown quite a lot. So I'll just play it by the ear and I might be picking up some of them to go into the new landscape, the ark, because I would like to showcase them. But if I were to learn from my mistakes in the past, I would need to pick the larger ones to go out and maybe keep the, the smaller rosettes here for now. Well, not the smaller ones, the younger ones. Because the, the more mature ones have a higher chance of surviving out in the elements, especially while, while it's summer. When the time comes that I'm ready to continue working on the arc, I'll be picking out some of them and place them in the bowls and pots within the arc. The imbricata leading up to our rotating clothesline are all flowering as well. And actually, there are some uh, some echeveras here which are not actually imbricatas. This should be a capri or a powder blue, I can't remember. So there's one here, a small pup here, and another one here. Here's my Romeo. Nothing bad happened to it while I was away. So I'm just going to continue leaving it in this spot. Maybe I'll just move it somewhere here. Just so it does not crowd. Because otherwise, this one would not get any sunlight. When I have the time, I'm going to revise the plant selection here. So I've got a bunch of pots with the same types, types of plants. I've got, got a few of them with Lemaire and Corderoi. So soon, pretty soon, the, the Romeo will be going in. Since it has been cold and dark for the past several days, the Graptophytum Supremes in this spot have have gone pale and are etiolating. The weather is improving now, so I guess I'll just leave them here. I won't be doing any chops anytime soon. So I'll just observe and see how they go. At the rate that I'm growing elegance, I think it would be a good idea to remove all of the glaucas here. So these ones. And replace this area with elegance. That way I remain consistent with the other parts because surrounding the bowls and lining up this area are also elegance. This means I would be freeing up these rosettes and place them on, on the stream of glocas on the other side. There are still a lot of gaps to fill. The pearls that I have planted recently are looking a bit dry, a bit brown. But I hope it disimproves as they put out some roots because the other pearls that have already been here previously are doing much better. As you can see, they are bright green, a very healthy green. Same here. So I hope that in time, these ones would also turn green once they have started pulling nutrients and water from the soil. In this basket of burro's tail or burrito, I see more flowers. Looks like it's getting ready to bloom. So most of my freelies and large echeverias have pops underneath. I'm going to take my own advice and just leave the pops for now. Leave them for as long as I can while it's growing season. That way they would grow much faster than otherwise if I remove them now and leave them to grow their own roots. I don't want them to waste time trying to grow roots when they could just continue growing while connected to the parent plant. The afterglow pops on this on these two stumps are are getting so crowded and I think the 
the dry parts of the stem is already creeping downwards so to avoid them getting affected by this I probably have to pluck the upper pops soon I have this Crashula obliqua here it's a variegated version I got this back when I didn't know which you know which types of succulents I would like to collect so I think everyone starts off like that in any case I just noticed that it's growing lots of offsets now and it might be outgrowing the pot soon so I guess I'll have to transfer it to another pot a lot of the plants here in the rack which are in the shade are starting to etiolate most notably this Graptopetalum purple delight so I might have to do something about that as well I think it's almost finally time to separate this clump of elegance here they're no longer looking symmetrical so some of the leaves are longer than the others but I'll just leave them there for now and let them grow even more because I can use them to seed other clumps you know uh, I'll, if I keep them separate they would be growing their own pups since they are already mature or almost quite mature so we'll see these are only the things that I've noticed so far and there should probably be a lot more for me to work on so for now I've just taken note of them and I will be working on them over the next few days right Zaki? <laughs> as you know I'm working on the arc so some of the plants would probably go into the arc definitely some of my propagations would be going in as well because I'm thinking of creating a creating a tapestry around the bowls there's still a lot of things to think about so keep your suggestions coming I'll, I'll probably start working on layouting the pots this weekend next weekend so the weekend of the 16th and 17th, 17th I think that's if I get my dates right because right now I am feeling a bit disoriented so if you enjoyed this episode please hit like the bottom of the video and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this you could also check out my socials at Facebook Instagram and Twitter I usually post photos on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter I usually have notifications so all of my accounts are connected it's just that updates to my playlist will generate notifications on Twitter so in my next episode I would be focusing on arranging the balls in the arc and maybe cleaning up my garden that way I would have a, an inventory of the plants that I could use for now I have a few areas in mind that, that that would be going to the bowls but I'm starting to have second thoughts now about the number of bowls that I would be using because in order to be able to create a tapestry I would need space and to create space I would need to reduce the number of pots and bowls in the ground so we'll see it's going it's going to be a fun exercise trying to simplify things and that's what I'll be going to do in the next episode so until then, Zach say bye. Wow! <laughs>